Welcome to a brand new episode of Sequel Rights, the podcast where we take a look at the franchises that make you go, they made how many of those? We give each and every sequel a fair trial. My name is Justin Camps, and I'm here with Elizabeth Helley and Tyler Hymanson. Oh, and guess what? Our piles cross again. <laughs> We're back for the final ending to the Phantasm series, Phantasm Ravager from 2016. Capital oh V in Ravager. That's right. Real Revive. huge v. Is that what it stands for? I didn't get it. Revivager. <laughs> Revivager. Re-fi-ger. <laughs> I think that's the uh, correct pronunciation. That's for right. Sure. Um, but before we uh, get into the final confrontation with the tall man, Elias, where can people reach out to us this week? Yeah, so this is it. We need new franchises. So email us your suggestions and your thoughts and questions to sequelrights at gmail.com and find us on social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube at Sequel Rights. And if you enjoy the show, please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. Uh, your five stars go a long way, and we'd really appreciate it. All right. Well, you know what? I think uh, by the time this movie landed in 2016, they decided, you know what? I think by now... Four movies later, people finally know Man. what a phantasm is. So I R- had an inkling. R.I.P. Definition guy. <laughs> we miss you. I can't tell what's real anymore. So I wander, following the tall man's path of destruction. One eye out for those spheres, and the other for him. He is clearly delusional. You are not even real. You're my bad dream. Stay out of my way. Ooh, better get out of his way, Tyler. Don't get out. Get out of his way. Don't mess up his plans. Okay. I I will do my best to figure <laughs> out what his plans are, so I do not <laughs> mess them up. Oh man! Well, here we are in 2016. Uh, the last movie was what 1998. Yeah, something like that. Whew. And. Everybody's been getting old throughout the course of this. Now people are quite old. They're old, but they're all still there, which is yes, pretty crazy. impressive. Just like from the get go. I was like, wow, this, this is like an emotional roller coaster for me because there'd be stuff that would like make me mad, but then be like, oh, but actually, you know, like that's <laughs> great. And they'd be like, oh, but this is oh, not mad again. And yeah. Like, oh, but this, that, you know, like, like at the beginning, when they made it seem like once again they were not gonna age this character for real and reggie was just walking out of the desert right after the events of the last movie and i was like are you kidding me like they really gonna try to pull that again and then all of a sudden when he like wakes up from the first level of dream or reality i was like oh okay never mind (laughs) (laughs) yeah and then instead you were just confused the rest of the movie (laughs) yeah (laughs) to a point yeah so so, yeah, uh, there's like at least three different potential timelines. Yeah, yeah, well, Mike Mike read a book about it. They're called Membrane Timelines, but he doesn't have time to talk to you about that right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like when they're all stacked on top of each other and then sometimes they touch. <laughs> it's like, I'll send you the book. You can read about it later. <laughs> You at least got to do a Avengers Endgame and tell us what other movie we know that it's similar to. Yeah. <laughs> like the time logic. Yeah, right. Uh, you remember that scene in the Thor The Dark World where all the different universes were stacking on top of each other? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then there was that scene where he was riding on a train. It's like that. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Uh, well, we should say, uh, we might have mentioned it briefly at the end of last week's episode, but this is the first of the series to not be directed by Don Coscarelli. And yes. uh, I don't know about you guys, but it was immediately <laughs> apparent. Um, yeah. 
unfortunately, but it's directed by David Hartman, who also uh, co-wrote the script with Don Coscarelli. And he was involved in the other movies. He was an art department and he was, you know, he was around on other Phantasm sets. So he's not it's just not some random guy. It's uh, somebody who is in the orbit of the Phantasm spheres. Yeah. Um, Tyler, I'm curious. Uh, how how new is that book of his? And does it go into this movie at all? Uh, I, you if know, let's enough? see. I don't know. If I you believe got that it. Far. I believe at the Beyond Fest we were going, it came out at the same time. Yeah, it actually came out in 2018. I I did not get to uh, that part of the book, but I imagine. Wow, it Tyler. Did. Yeah, geez. What, you are have... you too busy with all your large social <laughs> gatherings or something? <laughs> <laughs> this guy's having I, parties. Know, <laughs> people demand ads. Brands need ads right now more than ever. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah, I, I hear so that. that's been taking up my time. <laughs> oh, no, I, I'm just kidding. Uh, yes, but right at the beginning, I was kind of like, okay, well, this camera is. I, I mean, I like double checked my TV to make sure the motion smoothing and everything was <laughs> off. I was like, did somebody mess with this when I was away? And then I was like, oh, no, that's just the movie. Oh, yeah, yeah, that digital camera, man. Yeah. I, mean, um, I think it gets better when things start getting like dreamier and they start throwing filters and, oh, we're in the red world now. And now we're in the post-apocalyptic world uh-huh. or whatever. The camera doesn't bother me as much. But, yeah, it was pretty rough in the like real life moments. <laughs> yeah. It looked bad. And in, like in 2016, like you could get a camera that like didn't look like that. Well, I, I think <laughs> it wasn't even it wasn't even just the camera itself. Like, I think the, just like the framing of some shots and stuff. I was yeah. like, why is everyone's head so big? Like, do we have to be so zoomed in? So close. people's heads yeah. all the time. Um, yeah, it was a lot. It was a lot of wides and a lot of cl- and everything close. <laughs> Extremely wide and incredibly close. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, the movie for me, yeah, I mean, throughout, I kind of was like, this feels like a fan fan fiction someone wrote yeah. <laughs> and, and filmed and just happened to be able to get all the original actors back for it. <laughs> I mean, that's, I, I think what Ela says was, is really true of like, there's so many things that are really like great about this movie. And then that makes the things that are disappointing, even that much more disappointing. Yeah. Like there, there is a structure to this movie. I, I will say that this is the most interesting, uh, entry point into the uh dreamlike structure of phantasm uh that we get in these movies i would say it's the most direct reggie's old now and he's being treated for dementia so a lot of what's happening in this movie of cutting through these different membrane timelines that we talked about are him not knowing if it's real or if he's completely delusional and the movie kind of doesn't answer it yeah really. I was like, is he being uh, treated for dementia? Is he? Yeah. <laughs> I, I I don't know what I believe by the end of the movie, honestly. Absolutely. Uh, but we the we first see Reggie stumbling out of the desert, uh, still dressed as an ice cream man. <laughs> yes. Pretty much like he, uh, yeah, this is like, uh, you know, I guess at the end of the last movie, he jumped into one of the dimensional forks. And so right. this would be ostensibly him having come out of it, uh, and he looks all beat up, and he's got the he's got the shotgun and everything. Someone yeah. stole his car. Someone stole his car after he was gone for a decade. That piece of <laughs> some piece of shit stole my car. But luckily, that that piece of shit is nearby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, that was really funny. I was like, oh, shit, there's his car right there. Of course, of course. <laughs> I did find it kind of funny that the spheres like mercilessly murdered that dude for really no reason. I was like, they have no uh, motivation to kill that guy. Like, it would have been much guy. more efficient had they just went straight after Reggie. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It almost looked like that one was like, you know, those two spheres, they were trying to catch up with the car. So he was just driving way too fast. And then all of a sudden, it was like this dude's down in the middle of the road. The sphere just hit him. Uh, and those two spheres had more personality <laughs> than any other spheres we've seen. They were, uh, they were downright jaunty. Yeah. And even <laughs> when he kills one of them, you hear it like make droid, sad droid noises. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> You know <laughs> that scene where he's like point blank shooting his gun into the glove compartment. Glove compartment. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it looks so ridiculous. Uh, he also, uh, I think, he has like infinite ammo in that gun too. This entire he does. Time. Well, I mean, that's his special <laughs> gun. That's why he was so upset that the car was stolen. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> um, 
but you know the the real the real start of the story finally um as we hear reggie say all good stories begin with a girl mm-hmm. <laughs> as i was like ah, god damn it. <laughs> i mean i guess these guys <laughs> these guys know the uh the formula they know they know yep. what reggie's got to come across a girl on the side of the road and i love that he did point uh, I forget which of our two guests pointed this out, but every time Reggie's reasoning is like, it's real hard out there on the road. Like, <laughs> on the road. It's the, the road. Why they it's hard. Him. And it's long. Yeah. He says that exact thing again. <laughs> there's a, I didn't grab this clip, but I really loved uh, when he pulls up, <laughs> there's this, the reaction from, from Dawn. She's like, oh my gosh, thank you. Oh, <laughs> I thought you were somebody <laughs> I knew. <laughs> Which is a very uh, her reaction of just to be like, oh wait, you're some old creepy old dude in a yeah <laughs> in a car. Sorry. Oh, ponytail. No hard pass. <laughs> Never mind. Seventy one Kuga. Kuda. That's right. That's like Barracuda. Yeah. yeah. Um. But yeah, we get Which introduced is, to Don. Uh, also, Reggie's age at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think is actually true. What I thought was great uh, for Reggie, I mean, like he's old, so you know he. he it was mostly him like standing still shooting a gun and stuff. But I thought that uh, he still had the same like attitude and like, uh, you know, funny. I I thought his personality was still there. Like he still got it like 20 years later or whatever. Yeah. He (laughs) he called a a badass mercenary ravager dude, babe. Yeah. I mean, he's still doing the thing. And I, even though, um, yes, it's annoying that he still tries to hit on this girl. The old Reggie would have gone upstairs, like yes, without true. being he invited. And he, this Reggie did not. And so, I mean, I guess wait, the younger Reggie is what we mean to say because now he's the old. Yeah. So <laughs> I just to just to circle back for a moment, I made the joke about that Reggie being the age of the seventy one Cuda. He is in fact seventy one right now. <laughs> no, in twenty sixteen. Oh, when, oh this, when this movie came out. So yeah, no. Right now he's he's hey he's uh he's presidential age right now. Reggie for president. I love that um this first like little story section with Reggie, uh which is the most like you know the most like the older movies is just like checking off the checklist of things Reggie has to do. He's got to meet a girl side of the road. He's got to take her try take her somewhere to try to <laughs> try to make out with her or right. whatever. Yes. He's got a he's Probably got a either a cabin or a motel, maybe hopefully abandoned. Yes, he's got he's got to end up in front of a fireplace. <laughs> he's got to pull out his guitar. Uh, yep. <laughs> and then yeah, he's got to try to sleep with her. Um song. <laughs> Yes, uh we got to talk about Reggie's song. I I think this is <laughs> this is so funny. He uh as soon as it as soon as it turns out that like his advances on her are, are going poorly, he's like, uh, no, j- just kidding. I, I, actually, I, I was going to write you a song tonight. And um, <laughs> this is the sweet, sweet little ditty he writes. And it has, you got to listen to the end. It has a, a brilliant ending. Here we go. In the warmth of your mountain cabin. In the glow of a newborn song So sweet Put my loving arms around you, baby And I whisper your name I whisper your name Hey, wow Fuck, what did she say her name was? <laughs> oh fuck <laughs> oh what the fuck did she say her name was he even took a time to put an almost rhyme in there and then still couldn't remember her name uh the yeah <laughs> i know the the other thing i love about this scene too is like it cuts back up to the bedroom uh where dawn is like getting ready for bed and she can clearly hear the song like because you hear the song playing up in her room and she kind of looks over and she's having second thoughts like, oh, I do have this giant bed all to myself. Uh, and then, you know, I love that even though she can hear the song and clearly hear that he doesn't remember her name, she still decides to come down and be like, hey, Reggie. Uh... Oh, never mind. He's asleep. But um, <laughs> I just thought it was hilarious that she would have heard like she can hear everything happening. She would have heard him be like not remembering his na- her name. 
but uh, whatever. Amazing. Um, and then we get our classic, uh, the, the next thing that ha- needs to happen to Reggie in all the movies is he has to have a dream. He That's falls, true. He falls asleep and has a dream. He's, uh, he's in, uh, some sort of nondescript hospital bed next to, uh, Jedediah Morningside. Morningside. <laughs> Jebediah Morningside. <laughs> And, um, and then he's like, you called that place Morningside. And it's like, you called it that. <laughs> yeah. There was a sign. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what else were we supposed to call it? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Then we, so we have, we have Angus Scrim being next to him and like basically just being Jebediah. Not, but then like at the end of it, he's a little bit cryptic. He's like, or am I? Yeah. He, <laughs> he clearly is evil all of a sudden. Um, that was a great scene, like his acting and transformation mm-hmm. that he does just with the raise of the eyebrow. He becomes a completely different person. And um, apparently that was like the last, you know, sh- scene that he shot as the tall man all- as well. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. As we're praising him, we we would be remiss to not point out that uh, right around when this movie came out, uh, the actor Angus Scrim passed away in 2016. Uh, and they, they were able to screen the movie for him uh, with, with some unfinished effects where he, he uh, liked it and really enjoyed it. Um, but uh, he was not able to see it with an audience. And that's something that uh, the whole creative team uh, is still bummed about to this day. Yeah, I think uh, I mean, I think I think honestly, I think he's probably my favorite part of this movie because he actually he gets to have more lines than he has, I think yeah. in any of the movies. Uh, and so we really spend a lot of time with him, um, you know, with these monologues and he's got some amazing, uh, some amazing monologues that I'll play some clips from later. But um, I, I think he does a great job in this and it was great to, to have him. I mean, obviously the tall man is an important part, but he's in the other movies. He's often just like slowly walking in the, in the distance or standing mm. still. Boy. Or something. Yeah. Or going boy. But he really gets to like have a lot of great dialogue and uh, all the stuff that he says is really ominous. And I just love his voice. <laughs> it's so cool. So, yeah, Reggie wakes up. He's like, oh, man, it looks early out. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, immediately he's like, oh, something's wrong. And, uh, of course, we go upstairs and Don. Well, is- he remembers her name. Yeah, that's right. Oh shit! Like, it looks early out. It's it's Don. That's right. Ah, uh, that's oh, her name. Don, right, right. <laughs> Far out. Um, yeah, and uh, she uh, she's totally dead, of course, because uh, you know, tall man, tall man because always gets them. Yep, because it's somebody that Reggie tried to romance in a phantasm movie. Yeah, and that reminds me, in the beginning of the movie, uh, one of the first confrontations that Reggie has with the tall man, he's like. You took my best friend Jody and my friend Mike away from me and makes no mention of his wife and child or the four to five women uh, that he's tried to romance along the way. (laughs) And God only knows how many others. Well, but then later in the movie, the subject of his wife and child come up again as a bargaining chip. And I'm like, you didn't even mention them earlier. Like you, uh, he clearly cares more about Mike and Jody than any else in the world oh well, yeah. no, he's like i don't want you to return them back as ghouls but give me back mike and jody <laughs> like that's yeah. what he says specifically he, t- he, he get the the tall man gives him the opportunity to have his entire family back and he's like nah i want my boys <laughs> yeah yeah give me my boys back i don't care about my wife we never even saw her once on camera <laughs> well it does uh and, and beg the question does reggie have a wife and kids in all of these different realities or is it just one of them that we saw that maybe he doesn't yeah, uh, it does beg that question because, uh, you know, as this goes on, you really start to question everything. Yeah. Because with the return of, um, I think her maiden name was Kathy Irvine, but now her name is Kathy, some the lady in lavender from mm-hmm. the first movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, we see the scene where she stabs him to death, uh, which was then maybe erased by mike's maybe dream at the end of that movie so then you start thinking like okay well when did this split from reality or split from the original timeline and you just don't know Mm -hmm. yeah that 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 moment kind of annoyed me because i was like oh man they're finally gonna deal with like whether or not this really happened or what happened and and then just kind of like flashbacked and then that was nothing 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 else (laughs) and i was hoping that there would be some more like 
I don't know. I was, I was hoping there'd be a deeper dive into what actually happened in that moment or something, but nope. Nope. So, I mean, we can keep talking about this, but I think that it, uh, it kind of indicates like, I know uh, like a unified theory of phantasm. We've always been wondering like, why definition man? Like why this word phantasm? It doesn't really seem to have anything to do with what we've been seeing in these movies, but, um, I don't remember the exact definition, but isn't it like the delusions of a disturbed mind or something like that? Something like that. Yeah. And so then you start to wonder like, okay, well maybe that's what it's been all along, like all these different things. And that's why it's really made no sense. And, um, a delusion some, of the disordered mind. He says. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, even though for f- about four movies, it seemed like that had nothing to do with anything. Uh, maybe it did. I <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, the first movie ends with him like, no, like it, it did have that because it was, yeah. it was Mike being like, no, like you imagined all this, like your, your brother died in a car accident, dude. Like, sorry, it's really. Yeah, but hard. they would each end that way. But then they would start again, implying yeah. that wherever it started is now the true timeline. Right. Yeah. So but now <laughs> that you kind of end things this way, ambiguously for the whole series, uh, I don't know. I maybe I'm just trying to give it the benefit of the doubt, but I kind of weirdly liked how it ended up. And me too. Um, mm. it's very, very avant garde, like in a weird <laughs> way. Yeah, you know, like uh, it doesn't care anymore that you don't really know what's going on. And once you accept that in this movie, then I think you can enjoy it more. Yeah, it's it surprisingly intellectual for a movie with a quad shotgun. Yeah, <laughs> with a quadruple barrel shotgun and and a bunch of other a bunch of other crazy action tropes that happen. Uh, it's it's baffling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it starts to make you really question like all this badassness, all this like mm-hmm. uh, th- the three of us are a trio, you know, like I know how to handle all these weapons. Like maybe that's all been mm-hmm. uh, fake this entire time. You know, he there's at one point where he's packing this ridiculous uh, canvas bag with every weapon in his trunk, many of which we've never seen before. And then some which harken back to characters in the other movies that aren't even there. So it's like, why does he need nunchucks if Rocky's not even really there? You, you know, know, like it does. It reminds me of my interpretation. I think we all love the leftovers here. Uh, I haven't and- seen it. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I know that's messed up. OK, well, <sighs> You got to watch. It. I don't want I don't I don't want to spoil things for you, but I, I feel like I, I just have to talk about it because I feel like feel it's free. the same. It's the same type of thing here. There's there's a point where uh, uh, Kevin Garvey's character uh, goes uh, and has to assassinate somebody. I won't I won't get into specifics here, uh, but it. a bunch of crazy shit happens and it's so dumb. And he even calls out. He's like, this is so dumb. And. <laughs> And I, I what I, I my interpretation of that is that he actually is, you know, going beyond and interfacing with some other power, but he's only he's limited with his experience and in interacting with it by his own consciousness and his own way of perceiving things. So like he's limited by it turns into a dumb action movie for him because that's the only way his brain can process it. <laughs> uh, and so there's there could be all this other stuff happening, but you're so just tragically limited by being a human person. Like, no matter if there is something beyond the scale or there is some, you know, goldfish can see 10 different, you know, they have different color receptors in their eyes, but they're still just a fucking goldfish. Right. And I feel like that this movie uh, particularly kind of uh, engaged with that idea. And and it's an idea that I find fascinating. Yeah. And. Uh, you guys talked a little bit about the dementia thing earlier, and maybe I'm just being like soft on it because like uh, I, you know, recently had a family member that was dealing with that and passed away. But like, I thought it was sort of uh, like interesting the way that they dealt with that and the way that he ultimately passes away in one of the timelines with Jody and Mike there with him. And it doesn't really matter if it's, fake or real you know it's just like a beautiful nice thing i think yeah i don't know and 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 even in that reality before when he's visiting with mike outside and he's kind of like well should i like just die here like sitting down in this chair should i get up and go you know shoot things and be a badass or whatever but the important thing about that reality that i think reggie kind of realizes is that even though he is deteriorating and kind of lost Mike has a good life in that 
in that timeline. Yep. He doesn't know about any of this shit that happened. Yes, Jody died and, and Reggie took care of him and that's all that he knows. And so, you know, there's definitely a part of Reggie that's kind of like, you know, maybe I should like accept that this is the reality because then Mike will have been spared all this pain, I guess. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I find all that stuff pretty fascinating. I was just, um, I got a little bit annoyed <laughs> by the end of like trying to determine which one was the true reality. <laughs> I, I I was like, Oh, it's definitely this. Okay. This makes sense. I'm going to follow this story. This is, this is what the real world is like right now. And then it would just jump back again. And I was like, ah, okay, that's too much. I'm done. <laughs> I'm yeah. done. And we didn't, we didn't talk about our friend um, in this movie. His name is Demeter. But yes, uh, that is our good pal, Doctor Arts. Yeah, lost reference, lost <laughs> yes, reference. reference. <laughs> I love. Uh, I pulled. I pulled some audio from that. That uh, that was a really funny scene. I <laughs> he like you know after Don uh, dies, he he hilariously packs this bag full of like every single weapon that he never <laughs> uses in the entire movie. Um, but all these crazy weapons. And then he goes and and ends up in this barn with Demeter. Uh, and for whatever reason. Um, the sphere goes over and like really brutally kills this horse. Like I was yeah, like, yeah, oh, senseless God. horse murder. <laughs> yeah, yeah we've never no seen kill an animal before, have we? No, <laughs> I don't think so. But you know, when I was thinking about it, I was kind of like, well, if they can reanimate this horse, it could probably be a lot more uh, effective in its hauling duties than all those Jawas. That's true. Yeah. We do see but a horse, uh, horse with the uh, carriage in a couple scenes. So maybe, oh, yeah. <laughs> maybe they were doing That's that in the true. past. He was, and there was that magic photo of Angus Scrim looking at riding in a carriage, looking at Mike yeah. in the antique shop. <laughs> That's right. But uh, like, yeah, I don't know the the um, the horse murder was uh, at both times horrifying and also hilarious the way it kind of like yeah. zoomed in on Reggie's like eye, like, Oh my God. And then <laughs> immediately after that happens, he turns to uh, Demeter and he's like, dude, bad news about your horse. <laughs> <laughs> just Which like is the, an incredible line. Just like so laid back. Like, <laughs> dude, <laughs> you knew that Daniel Roebuck uh, only speaks Bulgarian. Yeah, right. <laughs> so he didn't even understand the beauty of that line. Like moments after he's like so like quiet and being like, dude, bad news. He's like, uh, Reggie's like this. Would you shut the fuck up, please? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to play that if we started arguing about something, but I don't think we will. <laughs> We're all friends. <laughs> We're a trio. That's right. You know what? It's really great to see you guys. <laughs> so great. <laughs> oh, man. Um, well, yeah, I mean, shortly after this is where uh, things start to get real batshit and jump around a bunch. Mm -hmm. um, we actually get introduced to uh, our first uh, new sphere in mm -hmm. uh, uh, we get we get to see a couple new spheres in this one, but um, after Reggie goes away from that farm area, he comes across this like, you know, a dimensional fork out in the wilderness, but also a fucking giant sphere that's like the size of, I don't know. I loved it. Yeah, I thought that was cool. Like <laughs> like the size of the uh, the ball they drop at New Year's or something. Yeah. yeah, it was really big. And like, I know that there's issues with the CG in this movie, but I did like like the texturing of the sphere, I guess uh -huh. like it was all scratched up and like reflective. And I thought that was pretty cool. I don't know. Yeah. I thought, I thought it was pretty sweet because, um, you know, we kind of like, we kind of lost. I feel like in the last movie, we lost a little bit of the, uh, Oh, um, you know, the tall man's building an army to take over the world or whatever yeah. that they introduced in number three. And, uh, we get to see some of that, plan kind of come to fruition in in some cool ways in this movie. Yeah, totally. So, okay, we've laid out timeline, dementia timeline, hospital normal mic timeline. <laughs> we've laid out uh him wandering the desert timeline. Yeah, and then it's confusing cuz in that timeline he then has other dreams like the timeline where he is in an old-timey uh old people's home with yeah. Jebediah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. 
And then, <laughs> the third then, timeline. But then we, but then we have the Mad Max timeline, <laughs> <laughs> the Rav- the Ravager timeline. Yeah, I love this. Uh, you, you know, um, before we dive into all that, we have a couple. Se- we have a couple great okay. scenes with. Um, I, I don't want to skip over these awesome scenes with the tall man uh, and Reggie. Kind yeah, of we having- got to talk about the white white room, right? Yeah, yeah. The kind of having these. Uh, I don't want to say battles of wits because like <laughs> Reggie's not really saying other <laughs> saying other anything other than like give me Mike and Jody, but uh, you know uh, the tall man is give like give me my Jody. Me tall Jody. man is giving him lots of pearls of wisdom yes. whether or not he's actually taking them in. Uh, it's great, and the first one, yeah, he the first time he goes through that dimensional fork, he ends up in the white room, which we haven't actually seen for a while, and. Uh, there's all this great dialogue from Anger Scrim about like, you know, J- uh, J- uh, Reggie's like, where are we? And he's like, not where, when? And he explains <laughs> that like they're in the white room uh, from the first movie, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. And this is where he first gives him the bargain of like, I could bring back, you know, like I said, uh, everyone who dies comes to me first. That's what you guys don't understand. And uh, I can bring back your family if you want them. Although I think Reggie is... Uh justified to be suspicious that you know it's the classic fairy tale bargain where it's like yeah i want them back but then they come back as zombies or jawas or something else yeah it's like i don't want my stupid jawa (laughs) (laughs) way you tricked me tall man Uh, but there's some definite definite moments here where the tall man's got some good points and i don't know if you have this recording but uh the way that the tall man describes us human people oh yes let I me, think it was fair. Let me play this because uh, this is actually a, a separate scene because uh, I just like recorded oh, this really? later. Oh, really? I thought it was this. Because he, so like when he goes, when Reggie goes back, he ends up in the mausoleum and confronts the lady in lavender or whatever it was, yeah. right? Uh, and then he goes through a cave and the cave crumbles and it turns into this crazy hellscape and that's where he confronts the tall man again. Oh, you're right. Okay. And uh, yeah, there's this monologue uh, where the tall man explains his thoughts on humanity that I could just listen to him explain <laughs> this forever. Uh, so you guys got to hear this. It's so good. Those frail human emotions again. Do you not understand? Your kind are simply skin sacks of water and meat. And when a few random electrons fire off in that puny brain of yours, you're ready to annihilate yourself for this this feeble sensation you call loyalty. Ah, so good. Fair enough. I was like, yeah, you know what? That that is what people are like. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And then I don't know if it was in the white room or in this later monologue, but the tall man is like, go ahead and do whatever you want. There are like thousands of me and we actually get a shot where they zoom out and there are a bajillion tall men, which was great. Oh yeah. That, that's in mm-hmm. that super awkward scene towards the end where everyone's mouths well, are conspicuously well, covered. Big surprise. I can't keep <laughs> the timeline of the movie straight. No, but it's I because... do have kind of like these images that were very striking. Yeah. You know? Yeah, no, I just have it in my head pretty clear because I like just clicked through everything to grab sound oh, bites. I got it. Got it <laughs> yeah, yeah, it. makes sense. Um, but uh, yeah, the 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 tall man in these three moments is just so great. All all his scenes are great in this movie. Um, yeah, and I don't know if it's true because like, once again, I am DB trivia, but uh, someone has attributed this to something Don Coscarelli and the other. The, the main director of this movie said that um, Angus Scrim and Reggie Bannister, the the people, not the characters, they got in some sort of heated argument about what should be said in this white room dialogue. And um, hmm. I don't know. I would love to know more of what that was, what the argument what was, that could yeah. have been about. Yeah. But they both have been playing these characters for, 40 years yeah at this point it's and so insane. yeah i mean i think you'd have a very strong uh idea of you know that. yeah of what they would say and not say and when you know what would be true to form and not true to form and so uh yeah, yeah. And very interesting that's wild yeah that's really cool um i also love uh the the second scene with the tall man where they're on top of that like you know this crazy like cone shaped rock in the middle of yeah. what, what he describes as uh, either my hell or yours, you know? Um, 
I love that they they uh, insinuate or you know they plant this seed of an idea that uh, Reggie is not even a real person at all, and that he's just yeah. like a bad dream. He's got this great dialogue that the tall man is like, you're not even real. You're just my bad dream, which I think is just such a cool, you heard it in the, uh, I didn't take the clip cause it's in the trailer that we played earlier. Yeah. Um, but I think that's just such a cool idea. And then I was thinking the whole time, the rest of the movie, I was like, Oh man, is Reggie just like not even real at all? That would be kind of cool. Like that. The tall man just created an adversary right. for it's himself. Like, it's the, it's the nightmares nightmare type of thing. Yeah, and yeah. he later says like, you know, Mike is my project, my, or my experiment. Mm-hmm. And you, you like every tall, all man gets to have a little fun. Is that what he yeah, says? Like that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Every tall man is allowed their amusement. Their, yeah, Yikes. their diversions or whatever. Yeah. It's so great. <laughs> I mean, yeah. And so Reggie's got to be questioning his entire existence, which is just crazy. <laughs> yeah. And it makes more sense now that, uh, you know, in the last movie where the tall man just lets him go that he's yeah. like, Oh, if he's having fun, like watching him fuck around and try to kill him, then, <laughs> then it makes more sense that he would let him go and just be like, Oh, let's see what this guy does next. He can't actually kill me. So whatever. <laughs> I think oh, that's man. funny. Totally. Um, but yeah, so this is about the point where we start to, uh, once he, once we find out that, you know, he says that thing about the bad dream is when Reggie then wakes up in this crazy, like, harness on the on a hospital yeah he's like in a mini dimensional fork that his brain has been in that, for apparently 10 years of this timeline yeah. yeah and this is where my mind i was like oh my god okay so none of this was real and he was just in this thing the entire time uh maybe what? yeah uh there's also and i'm kind of forgetting at what point this is as well but um the dementia timeline and the apocalyptic timeline come together at one point and reggie may have senselessly killed several <laughs> medical personnel right yeah. uh, yeah. <laughs> it's un- it's unclear that was very unclear because we never go back to that timeline until he's in his deathbed yeah that was a really interesting moment for me because i was like yeah, you never see them. It's always kind of like, you know, Reggie falls down and he wakes up like his eyes close and he wakes up in the next place or something happens. Um, but you never that's the first time you see it like blending together. And mm-hmm. yeah, he very clearly like the doctors are like, hey, let's go get that guy. And then he turns around and the doctors turn into those gravers and he shoots them. And I was like, oh, fuck. Um, yeah, I thought for sure he was just killing doctors there. Um but then it keeps switching. Yeah, I don't know. It keeps switching back and everything's fine. I think he did. I think that depending on what reality it is, he did kill doctors. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I in a, as horrible as that is, that's where I sort of started getting on board with like, okay, wait, these are all like blending into each other. Yeah. yeah. And that, that's sort of where it was like a turning point for me where I, I kind of started to like it instead of being irritated by the mm. timelines. I agree. I was like, okay, this is the, now there's stakes to this. Like they've, you know, well, and it's also the point where he chooses that, like where he's like, you know what? Like I, I this is the choice. Like this is, I don't know which one of these are real, but I want to be the one where I'm the badass ice cream man and not yeah. the, the old man. <laughs> Do we think that with, since there's so many different timelines is, and is he an ice cream man in every timeline? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> That's a good question. Because the split happened sometime after they met the tall man, right? I don't know. Or maybe there is no split. Maybe they're all parallel. Yeah. You're right. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know yeah. though. You can't you can't escape your destiny and being an ice cream man. That's his true calling in every think, timeline. Do we think that he there's there's a there's a timeline where he's like the Bob Dylan of that universe and like people <laughs> just love the songs of Reggie, but he still yeah, fights. Man. It's like it's like Bob Dylan's fighting demons. <laughs> oh, for <laughs> sure. Metal spheres. For sure. Um, and he's got a song called In the Moonlight with Dawn that is just like <laughs> number one hit. <laughs> And another and another song called Bring Me Back My Jody. Bring Me Back My Jody. <laughs> oh god. Yeah. Um so diving into the um the Mad Max world. Uh I do think there's some cool stuff in this. Uh even though some of it looked kind of iffy, I did like that m- moment when Mike uh you know, he he reunites with Mike and then they're about to like go through this doorway. And he's like, it's not our world anymore. It's his. And they kick it open. And it's like, 
Yeah, like the tall man has like terraformed the world and there's all these giant balls and people are like shooting shooting Jawas left and right trying to survive. Uh, I thought that was really cool. And then his explanation later when we see all that news footage. Yeah. Also very cool. Also very cool. Yeah, that shot where it's revealed is really awesome because this is crazy. I mean, it's the... Uh, <laughs> I was talking with Elos before we started recording that we like need to find a word for these sequels that are uh, plot wise ambitious, but low on the visual effects. And, uh, and you know, the, the good shoot description is it looks like a sci-fi original movie effect, yeah. which is accurate, but like, it, it's something different than that too. But I mean, it, it, that's what this looks like, but it's this crazy like infinity shot where it zooms down this, you know, main street, and then it zooms right into Reggie, like sitting in the window of the, yeah. of, the insta- of the asylum. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> what? Like, <laughs> that was crazy. And yeah, she's like, oh, it, never mind. Let's <laughs> forget about that for a little bit. And we have to talk about, I'm sorry, is his name Chunk? Yeah. His name okay. is Chunk. So it's revealed <sighs> when he wakes up from his weird dimensional coma one of the people that has come to save him uh is dawn but she doesn't know she's dawn so that puts another layer of like questions into what which one is reality Mm -hmm. but then he's she's with a little person who is revealed to be not a jawa but just a little person whose name is chunk and he's very cool and Mm -hmm. and you know he calls reggie out for being old and bald which very few people have done and was (laughs) delightfully refreshing um and i don't know that the character of chunk was executed um as uh graciously and as well as he could have been <laughs> no. but the idea of a badass little person who is fighting on the side of these you know rebels fighting for humanity versus these jawas that everybody hates for all these movies is very interesting like as an idea and how like reggie and mike and them would eventually have to learn how to like trust this person and you know like not be freaked out by him because he's just a regular person. He's not a job. You know what I'm saying? Yes. No, I, I get that they thought that I think that I could <laughs> believe that if they didn't think I, I did, if I couldn't see them as they're writing it on the page, them thinking that they're so <laughs> fucking clever about it. Like, yeah. and, and then just not executing it in a way. It looked so then, goofy. Yeah, they don't actually really get into all of that. But the idea, I think, was. Yeah. Kind of cool. Like, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Then they 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 we've seen so many times that the tall man doesn't give a fuck if he gets blown up, <laughs> but like like we they shoot him with an RPG in this movie and and Chunk's like fire in the fucking hole, yeah. but then like later <laughs> he disguises himself as a Jawa and then is wearing like a grenade suspenders grenade suspenders is the way I would describe it yeah and and he's like I got yeah. this guy's run yeah and but he sacrifices uh, himself it didn't seem necessary I feel it like he could have thrown we, the grenade we knew that it was gonna do nothing yeah (laughs) and uh well before he let me just play this real quick before he even like uh runs in and blows it up he has this amazing uh total dig on the tall man hey tiny where the fuck do you think you're going (laughs) i don't know if you can hear that there's so much music going on at that point lol tiny yeah hey tiny where the fuck do you think (laughs) uh I mean, yeah, like I said, I don't think that the character is executed as gracefully as it could have been, but it is cool to cast a little person just as a role in a movie, especially in a horror movie or any sort of sci-fi fantasy where they're constantly being stuffed into various costumes. I mean, I just think of when uh, in Solo, of all things, when Warwick Davis just played a regular guy and not an alien and not an Ewok and not a goblin you know he's just like oh yeah i'm I'm here i'm part of whatever that thing was called emphasis nest um <laughs> it's just so it's just kind of cool that they gave this actor that opportunity yeah they gave him uh, also the equal opportunity to uh, be a creep at the end of the movie yep. as well <laughs> just like all the <laughs> other guys in this movie <laughs> hell yeah um yeah i thought his he, he, yeah his character was fun but I, that whole reveal of him being like amongst the jawas and stuff was just so goofy i don't know <laughs> yeah well no because like <laughs> it's just we, so we overly it, dramatic yeah, seconds earlier in the movie that it was like that, that that's not gonna work and like they even <laughs> yeah. flashback to them blowing him up with the car and that's not gonna work yeah like 
The blowing him up part was stupid, but disguising as a Jawa, I think, was a solid plan. <laughs> yeah, it just was like, how did he even get over the- they? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense in that scene, but okay, whatever. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the the news footage thing. I thought that was a a cool moment where Mike is explaining how the tall man yeah. like took over the world. Uh, there's I, a pandemic. I yeah. I also thought it was funny that like yeah they explained that there's like. Yeah, there's a pandemic where people's brains like get really hot and explode. And then he says at the end, like, we traced it back to the tall man. Like, obviously, there's fucking giant (laughs) spheres, like lasering buildings. Like, who the fuck do you think it was? It's like, "Mm, I I wonder, I wonder who. This kind of feels like Mitch McConnell. (laughs) Yeah. I wonder who could have done that. But uh, that's all I really wanted to say about that. I thought it was. It was a well put together scene, but then I thought that ending part was funny. What else is there to talk about? I mean, we kind of got into the big, like, why do you guys think that, um, do you think that at the last minute they were still trying to decide what dialogue they were going to say in that final confrontation scene? Yes. Yep. We're like, everyone has a mask. And then also the tall man is speaking telepathically. I I also, I also think it could have been an issue with Angus Scrim becoming ill. Oh yeah, maybe they were like, let's see what lines we have available. Although yeah, they- so I think it could have been that. Yeah. Uh, I think that that is the you, you've you've landed upon the fatal flaw of this movie is that it has a the dreamlike nature of these films has been wielded for great effect to cover up budgetary shortfalls, mm-hmm. uh, and and. For the first movie, I think that there's stuff that that works perfectly. Like I even brought up the thing about them cutting to black, and you guys were both like, "No, I thought that was awesome." And yeah. I was like, "Well, I thought that was obviously them cutting around." But like, okay, cool, I get <laughs> yeah. it. I think that this movie leans on that trope a little bit too much, and it's not justified enough. And so you can tell that they're cutting around stuff mm-hmm. and going from this scene to that scene, and maybe it's it's it bent it so far that it broke. Uh, and I think that what you're talking about in this scene is a clear example of that, whether it was budgetary or it was they for whatever reason, they didn't have the shots that they needed for this scene, whether it was the, the you know, Angus Scrim's health or anything else. And it, it definitely shows, unfortunately. Yeah, the scene looks a little weird, but I do think there is some cool imagery um, that does happen during that scene, like the moment when... Um, the tall man calls out the sphere and sends it across this chasm. And we get like this wide shot of like the sphere slowly like moving across. And the music is like the music in the movie is not that great. I don't think the score, but at this moment it's like really bombastic and like the loudest we've ever heard it. And it's like really kind of like Mm. epic sounding like that. We haven't, you know, the original movie, like that score is amazing, but it never gets to like this crazy, like action scene, epic moment, which I think, probably a lot of the fans fans of the movies were like, you know, waiting for this confrontation to happen for forever. So, um, totally. I thought that looked cool, but what do you guys, what do you guys interpret is happening? Um, when the sphere comes up to Mike and his eyes turn, you know, gold like the sphere. Yeah. And then it just so, kind of flies around him. Like, what do you think is happening there? I don't, we've, we've mm. seen Mike's eyes turn met- metallic like this a couple times before. Mm-hmm. And, for whatever the movie is doing with Reggie and these timelines and his consciousness, I think is really beautiful, but I would have liked to get more clarity on what's going on with Mike in the timeline where he has this wound on his head and something has been put in his head and his eyes turn that way. Like whichever timeline that is, I would still want to know what the heck is going on there with Mike. And maybe that's by design in that they think, okay, you know, like, Angus Scrim, dead. Reggie, real, real old. Let's, you know, call it a day on him. You know, that's a wrap for Reggie. But, may, you know, there could be still be somewhere to go with Mike, maybe. Yeah. And so maybe that's part of why they didn't explain it so much or also just a budget thing, like you were saying, Tyler. But, um, yep. but yeah, I don't know what's going on there. But like <laughs> I said before, the tall man statement of like, no, no, Mike is my project or whatever yeah. word he uses. And you're just for fun. Uh, I thought was very intriguing. Yeah. I still want to know what that, you know, and there the, it comes up multiple times because the, the Reggie is like, give me Mike back. And he's like, no, he's so, mine. Forever. Yeah. There's still something with the tall man and Mike. I don't know how we can find out more about it or if we ever will, but it's definitely not resolved here. Yeah, probably not. 
would be my guess, but everywhere bills this as like the final, <laughs> the final yeah. movie. But uh, which makes sense. I mean, it would be weird sure. to do one without without Angus Scrim. I think. Yeah, it would be really hard. I mean, but we've seen that 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 he's adept at using old footage. That's so. true. Yeah, can maybe figure out a way to make it work. I don't know. Just depends on the money and how cheap this technology gets. I mean, God forbid anything look as horrible as uh, Tarkin ever <laughs> again on this planet Earth. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I think they've done other things since that haven't been quite as bad as that, although still not great narratively, maybe like the Princess Leia stuff, you know, like it, di- it didn't look as horrible as tarkin but it just still didn't really work but i think with the tall man being so singular and with so much footage that exists maybe you could do something yeah i don't know i don't know yeah yeah, totally um or or get mike and make him the tall man yeah yeah i mean that may be where it has to go that's where it seemed like it was heading the whole time but yeah we never quite got there um so they blow him up they jump back out of the portal and uh the cuda shows up uh, retrofitted with some mini guns to potentially kill a few more uh, hospital workers. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but Jody's there. Jody's there, you guys. Jody. Okay, well, when they were doing this slow like reveal of like who's driving the Cuda, I was like, it's gonna be Jody. I mean, come on. I assumed it was probably him. I like for a moment I was hoping it was Rocky, but yeah, yeah. I thought it was gonna be Rocky too. Oh yeah, I spoiled it for myself <gasps> seeing that oh, she was in the movie no. but i didn't really know when she was gonna show up i didn't i didn't see that um but uh yeah jody's there driving the car apparently reggie lets him drive i don't know you, usually <laughs> and, in those kind of situations don't... they're like hey i'm the driver <laughs> they don't it's answer... actually jody's car right yeah it is oh, that's yeah, right think, that's yeah. right yeah uh they don't answer any of reggie's questions really um and you know after one to two protestations reggie just kind of gives up and is like god i'm so fucking happy to see you guys you know and it's like (laughs) really cute in a weird way yeah um i don't know this this scene uh you know i think i'm the only one who's brought it up but i just because i think it's funny um we (laughs) the last i think in like movies three and four i've talked about the amazing chemistry between mike and jody yeah every every time they every time they talk so i've got i've got two more verses in the ballad of mike and jody to share with you guys tonight um the first one uh goes like this where is everybody nobody made it nobody made it nobody (laughs) made it and I sent, uh, <laughs> I sent, okay, I sent, uh, you know, Eliz and Tyler uh, oh, these yeah. screenshots <laughs> before the podcast. <laughs> and there's this face that Mike makes after he's like, nobody made it. And he just looks like he's so bored, like staring <laughs> off into the middle distance, like, uh, this is the 50th time I've read this line. I don't know why they didn't like it the first time. Um, but I thought his delivery of that line was hilarious. And then uh, here's part two, which, um, you know, Mike, Mike gets a chance to be, you know, he does his best to be John Connor in these moments, <laughs> but uh, he just, uh, I don't know. Well, you guys decide. We're going to fight harder. We're going to fight smarter. We're going to change tactics. We're going to go north where it's cold. Really cold. The bastard hates the cold. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the bastard hates the cold. The, the best is Reggie's reaction. He's like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, he does. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, the ice cream. That's why he never liked me. <laughs> I cut out all the I cut out all the uh, Reggie just be like, it's so great to see you guys again, like six times. Uh, yeah. He's um, like a drunk guy that you're like, you haven't seen in five years or something. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, that line. We're going to fight harder. Fight smarter. <laughs> I don't know. Just so funny. Dude. Oh God. Um, but yeah, apparently they're driving off to the, uh, somewhere cold to fight, the, to fight the tall man. Um, probably South Africa. Yeah. <laughs> and it, the frigid, the frigid wastelands of South Africa. I hear it's very blue there. So, you know, it's very cold. 
uh, it was like, yeah, as much as I was, you know, laughing at a lot of the dialogue in this scene, I did enjoy the, um, it was fun just to see Reggie so happy because, uh, you know, he, he's kind of like been, this is what he's been trying to get to this entire time. You know, he doesn't care about his wife and daughter. He only cares about these two guys. And it was like, I liked the emotion of the camaraderie of like, Oh my God, I've tried so hard. We're finally back together. It was like a nice moment. And then the fact that it's like interspersed with this like death scene (laughs) uh, and we know it's the end of the franchise. I thought it was, I thought it was kind of, kind of moving. Yeah. It it got me. Yeah. We get a little, uh, we get a little like, you know, funeral montage of all the characters. Yeah. And like, yeah, cutting back through old footage. Like, no, I thought it was very, very good. Yeah. There's, I, I mean, I said this in the last movie. There's something really powerful about being able to show their younger selves up to their hijinks and the famous thumbnail photo of the three of them looking into the white room or whatever, you know, mm-hmm. and just and then cutting to them currently just being happy. It's just really like, damn, because, you know, like no matter what timeline it is, they've suffered and been apart for a very long time. And so whether or not one of these two timelines is true. Either he's dying with them by his side or they're going off to have more adventures. Like it's just kind of beautiful. I think. Yeah. It's, it's really cool. I mean, you know, there's not many franchises where you can say like, we were been following the same actors and characters, uh, over 40 years, you know, uh, it's pretty nuts actually. Uh, it's great. Yeah. It's, it's, it's impressive. Yeah. Absolutely. So uh, that's that's the end, right? They zoom off into never. the distance. It's never over. <laughs> it's never over. It's never over. Tyler, did you watch the post credits? <laughs> Mid credits. Uh, did you really not? Oh no! It's really long. <laughs> Tyler. Oh my god, there's like a it's whole like a full Marvel level long ass. There's scene. a whole epilogue. Yeah. No. Oh my god. <laughs> full of misogyny and characters returning that haven't been in the movie yet. Okay, well, I'll go back and watch it. Tell me what happens. All yes, right, you want to so say yeah. dimensional fork pops up and um chunk jumps through and his uh hand has been cut off. And he's all charred up, but he's alive. And uh, or his hand has been blown up, not cut off. Sorry. He's lost uh, a chunk of his hand. Yeah. Somebody walks up to him and takes off their hood and surprise. It's Rocky. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> and she's like, all right, man, like, good job, I guess. I don't even know. And then Let's go. And then he's like, oh, can you like give me a piggyback ride? Because like. <laughs> I'm so injured or whatever. And she's like, Ugh, fine. So she like gets down on her knees and he walks up behind her. And then he like looks at his hand and he looks at her shoulder and he's like, huh. And then he straight up grabs her boob over the shoulder. And she's like, dude, seriously. And then she like swipes him off and like walks away. And he has to walk <laughs> to the car or he has to walk to the road on his own. <laughs> and then uh, the car picks them up with the three guys in it and yeah. we see Reggie's reaction to Chunk but we don't see his reaction to Rocky which yeah. kind of made me sad. She but. never goes he yeah he's never like oh my god Rocky what? Yeah. Also like you know that that scene is really weird uh because there's that moment where yeah so Chunk grabs her boob and she's like cut it out and then like the next scene while they're waiting for the car She's like, well, there's no other guys around, so I guess you'll have to do for now. Is like yeah, literally I mean, I think what that she's was just kind of a joke. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess, but it was just like, why? Especially because she knew so, there was three other guys driving this? toward them. Why even so honestly, this? after watching the movie, I was looking at IMDb and I saw that she was in it, and I was just like, okay, like so maybe it was like a flat. I mean, maybe I missed it. Like, yeah, <laughs> and I did. Turns out I actually did miss it. Yeah. Uh, um. You also very sadly missed one other thing. Um. Because, yes. well, the credits, first of all, the credits are like kind of cool because there's all these like, there's all these scenes and some of them seem to be like deleted moments that we don't even see in the movie Yeah, of like, uh, it's always like all the characters like fighting or shooting people. And then there's some scenes of like the giant spheres, like crushing buildings and stuff that we didn't see in the, um, mm-hmm. 
in the movie at all. But the entire end credits track is like a remix. And there's also a rap. Yep. Oh, shit. <laughs> and uh, I don't know if we've mentioned it on the podcast ever, uh, but Tyler and I maintain a... Uh, a playlist an, called an ongoing playlist. Yeah. An ongoing playlist in, uh, in Spotify called like this movie definitely needs a rap song or something <laughs> like that. And, uh, I was looking back and I'm like, man, we haven't been able to add a, any barely this year. There's just the one from Sonic, uh, sped up or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, cause there haven't been any movies, but, uh, sadly this song isn't available on Spotify, but if it was, I would put it in that playlist. I just want to read a couple of the, uh, the lyrics here. Oh I, my God. I yes, typed please. out well, a couple. You gotta start with how they started off though. Well, how did they start it off? Cause I don't Is know. Is there a record I... scratch? No, it starts off with boy. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> boy. The whole and then the, it goes into the song. Then the beat drops. Yeah. That's the whole amazing. end credits is like a remix of the theme, which is kind of fun. Um, so here, I, I just I just pulled a couple stanzas that I thought were funny. Here is, did you know Reggie loved the ladies? Where'd they go? It's like one minute they hear, then they turn to animals. What? <laughs> uh, here's another line. Running Dude, Brad, no, just about your horse. <laughs> running from a tall man, mad scientist, trying to add me to his client list. But if I walk through those gates... It'll be me and him. I'm not trying it. Those are some of the lyrics. Do we know who the MC is that is dropping those sick, uh, sick it's, verses? It's Elvis Brown is the, the artist. Yeah. All right. But the song is called Reggie's Rap, and that's what it's, that's what it's titled in the uh, in Amazing. <laughs> and you, you better believe you'll be hearing it at the end of this podcast. Don't worry. Absolutely. Don't worry, fellow listeners. Um, yeah, I mean, so I think that's I think that's kind of the end. I can't believe Tyler, you, you know. I think honestly, you probably had to watch like twenty, maybe fifteen seconds of the credits, yeah, and then and then really the scene soon. came up. As soon as it came up, I switched over to the baseball game. I'm sorry. Oh, it was like before man. the actors, I think. Yeah, it was so fast. I, just, I, I literally it was like title card, and I was like, okay, that play is baseball. hilarious because it was like a I don't know, like a five minute scene almost. Yeah, God, yeah. you stupid skin sack of water and meat. <laughs> yeah. Typical meat sack. <laughs> I mean, that is a beautiful segue into how many skin sacks of water and meat would you give Phantasm Five <laughs> Ravager? Ravager. 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 <laughs> um, you know what? Like, I. Uh, in a weird way, I like really liked this one because mm-hmm. somehow it has gotten so off the wall that it got to the point where I was like able to just kind of let it go. And so I'm going to give it six uh, skin sacks of water and meat. Um, oh, maybe seven. I can't remember what I gave Whoa. the first movie. Whoa. But anyway, it's better than all the other sequels, in my opinion, um, because I think it is so avant-garde that then... I believe that it actually was trying to do that at this point. Whereas some of the other ones, I was kind of like, they just don't know what's going on. Nobody knows what's going on. Um, And I think that it coming to a close and kind of ending Reggie's story at the least uh, was kind of really beautiful and touching. And, um, you know, the fact that it gets to a point where you're like, I don't really care which one of these two is the real timeline uh in my opinion it was just really nice um but i still yeah like we said i do want to know more about mike so we'll see what happens absolutely uh well i maybe tyler will be the tiebreaker or whatever but i didn't like this movie that much um i'm gonna give it uh wait what was it again meat sex Sacks of meat? Yeah, ma- meat sacks. Skin, skin, skin sacks, sacks of water, of water and, meat. and meat. Skin sacks. I'm going to give it three a, it, skin sacks of water and meat. Um, mm. I uh, I really enjoyed the parts with Angus Grimm in this movie the most out of everything, but I feel like, you know, unlike Eliz, she, you know, you, you seem to feel like they had a better plan this time around. I feel like it's the opposite where they still don't know what they're doing and that, to me, I felt like all the cutting back and forth just made things like needlessly complicated. And, and, uh, I never kind of get a grasp on for, well, for me on it, I never quite get a grasp on what I'm supposed to believe is the 
correct timeline that's moving forward or something. I don't know. I, I, I just, uh, I got weary. I, I became weary of the constant cutting back and forth and like never fully landing on like, this is definitely what's happening. But maybe um, that's the point. Maybe, but uh, <laughs> it was no less I mean, annoying. That's, where I, that's how I came <laughs> around to accept the movie. But, but I can uh, under, totally sympathize with not because there's been other movies where I could not. Get yeah, because, you know, like you get to the end of this movie and then you're like, you're imagining, oh, what would be a Phantasm 6? Are they going to just pick up again like they're on the road and none of the flashback to old dimension demen, uh, dementia reggie the dementia dimension <laughs> the dementia reggie even phantasm matter. six the dementia dimension so yeah i don't know um i just kind of got a little bit frustrated by that and then yeah like you know the the ambition of this movie i feel like is uh much higher than it can actually achieve um which is a little bit unfortunate um and i feel like uh yeah, uh, this is another one like the last movie where it's like this is definitely like for fans only. Do not, do not, uh, do only not fans. Yeah, this is this is the only fans version of fans. <laughs> <laughs> the, the tall man, only fans. Um, anyways, uh, yeah, for British eyes only. <laughs> like, uh, there's no way that this movie makes sense outside of you having any other knowledge of Phantasm. God um, no. Which I don't think it has to, but it's just kind of also like so dense. Um, I don't know. I I liked some of the other ones better and felt distracted by the overly convoluted story and not great camera work and effects and all that. Yeah, I am going to split the difference here and I'm going to give it uh, five, five ravagers of uh, skin sacks of water and meats. Uh, I think that I had a lot of the same issues that you had, Justin. I do think that the movie was more ambitious than it had the uh, ability or um, means to pull off, but I also don't want to knock it for that. I think that the spirit of these movies is try of is trying to make more than what they have on them. And they, it's dizzying how impressive what this group of friends has been able to make uh, with these past five films. I think that this film overreaches, but I don't want to fault it for that. And I think that it did a lot of, I, I, I mean, I am faulting it for that. I'm not giving it an eight or whatever, but uh, I do think that it, it has a, it's it's one of the rare misses uh, of the series, but I don't think it's from a lack of trying. I just think that it's uh, really hard to do this over five movies. Yeah. And if it if it's the final one where you're trying to give a lot of answers or at least give an internal rhyme of what an answer could be, uh, I think it falls short of that. I think that was part of my problem too. Like, I guess I, I guess, you know, knowing uh, Don Coscarelli's uh, philosophy about the first film and like not wanting to Mm -hmm. give any answers, I should have known that uh, this final movie wasn't going to give that many answers, but I was also kind of like hoping that, knowing it was the final movie that it would really wrap things up in some sort of satisfying way. And it was kind of like, huh? But yeah, yeah. I don't know. I mean, you know, like they say in the movie, it really is an amazing story. (laughs) Epic. Actually, it was an epic story. Uh, and, uh, I'm glad we did it, but that, uh, I think that's going to bring us to the end of the phantasm series. What did you guys, did you guys have fun with this one? Loved it. Yep. I, I love uh, Elis brought up when we were talking to Matt the other week of what we could compare it to. And and she mentioned Basket Case. And I, I love finding these really labor like these these series that are these small horror projects that are truly labors of love and really diving into them and kind of see the breadth of what these creators have put into them. And, and it's really a joy and a treat to do so. So, yeah, I um. I don't know why I even bother trying to have any pretense at the beginning of these uh, franchises to be like, I'm separate from this one. I don't have any care <laughs> about these characters. And, you know, and then uh, if it's the same characters, I somehow always end up like loving them by the end. Um, you know, so uh, even though it was kind of there was definitely it was definitely a rough journey. However, <laughs> Uh, it did leave me really admiring, you know, this art, uh, that these guys have created over all these years. And, um, 
I do feel more kindly toward the end of it than you guys did. Um, are we going to do a ranking? Uh, if you want to. I haven't really okay. thought about it. I don't even it. know if I could do that off the top of my head. Okay, well, go <laughs> ahead and talk, Justin. And Tyler, you think about your ranking. Um, I was just going to say, yeah, I, I had a fun with this. The The one thing I would, the only tiny thing I am sad about is that it actually wasn't, uh, I wish it was scarier, I guess, a little bit. Um, you know, it's in the horror genre, but uh, for me, I don't think anything was scary, really. But I think, like, you know, the first movie was probably the scariest out of all of them. Um, and uh, I did find it interesting that it went further and further into sci-fi uh, as the movies went on. Um, I think it's cool. It's, uh, you know, uh, Tyler talking about uh, Don Coscarelli's book, True Indie, um, you know, really makes me interested to, to read that. And I wish I could have... I really am sad that I didn't wasn't able to get those uh, DVDs and Blu-ray discs that came out because um, I think these movies more than many that we watched, I would be really interested to see the behind the scenes and how everything came together because it's so interesting that you yeah. Know, yeah, these people have been doing this for you know forty years or whatever it is. Isn't there a set that comes in a sphere or comes? There in is. There, there is. Yeah. It's just very expensive. Uh, I just was like, I you know, it was almost two hundred bucks, and I'm like, I Jeez. don't want to drop that, even though. It, the special features are looking real good on that. Are exhaustive, yeah. 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 But uh, yeah, I had fun. Fun with it. Um, I can give my ranking. It's a bit of a hot take, I guess. But uh, I'll start start with one. And then I'll, I'll go to five, which Whoa. is this one. Um, and just because I like how it all came together. Mm. Uh, three, because I liked Timmy and Rocky. Then it's tough, but I'm going to say two because mm. even though you don't have original mic, two is where you set the tone for what is going to happen in all the other ones. Like we get so many things that then become the hallmarks of the franchise, like the yeah. four barreled shotgun, Reggie hitting on chicks, um, <laughs> yep. you know, like <laughs> all these things, um, you know, that forward, you know, become very important. But, uh, and then four, Four, which I, I do see after talking to you guys, I do see how it, there were some really beautiful dreamy parts in that way, but um, I don't know. I still, <laughs> uh, I still put it last. Fair, fair enough. All right, I think I got it. I think I say one, starting with one. Uh, then I believe it is three for me. Then I believe it is four. Then oh no, I'm sorry. Yeah, four, five, two. I completely oh. agree with your points on two. Yeah. Uh, I think that it is where the DNA, where it really understands what it's becoming. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of stuff. It, it is the foundation, but the experience of watching the movie wasn't as fun for me. It, it felt like a, uh, a little bit of a, uh, of a retread. It was kind of like <laughs> a, it, it, it was an evil dead, evil dead two situation. Yeah. I, I, uh, I don't know. I, I, I would put two above five in that or same order as Tyler's because yeah, I think two out of all of them had the best special effects. Uh, yeah. Had those, those crazy things with the balls and like going through that dude's body and stuff. Like, oh, I, don't, yeah. I feel like nothing in the mo- in the previous, uh, you know, the following movies matched that scene ever. And it was, Oh, so what great. about when the balls came out of her boobs? Yeah. No, I'm I'm scary. totally joking. Totally <laughs> I was joking. like, yeah, was, yeah, was, a yellow that was yellow awful. goop injector thing. That was yeah, awful. there's some great stuff. I mean, I you know you could you could honestly say that like maybe number two is the reason why this these movies kept going on. Yeah, um, because I think a lot of people probably had fun with that one. Um, but yeah. So yeah, would do you think they should bring it back or what? I mean, we've kind of talked a bit about this. I'd watch it. Yeah, I would check it out. Yeah, I, I, I would hope. Would. I would hope that someone at this point. Well, I don't know. I would still want someone from the originals to be involved. I think yeah. you got to go like Spider Verse with it and like acknowledge that maybe all of these things did happen. And I don't know. Maybe would it be crazy to be like in in phantasm six mike realizes he's a character in a movie and that reggie and the tall man are dead and you know <laughs> oh my god it's like it's like you, you, like you know what i was just thinking about this and it's like blumhouse is producing and david lynch is directing phantasm six and i'm just like great uh. <laughs> i mean yeah like there was that there was that moment in um what the last movie where they came close to realizing that they were in a movie when the car exploded that one time. Yeah, that's true. Yep. They were so close to being like, "Huh? We are, wait, are we in a movie?" Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
but yeah, if Mike realized, oh my God, I'm in a movie and I have to keep the story going and the tall man and Reggie are dead and like, what do I do? I'm the tall man now. Yeah, but I'm also I'm the tall man. I am the tall man now. Yeah, I am the tall <laughs> man now. <laughs> yeah, I would watch it. I think, um, you know, I, I like the dreamy storytelling, but I wish that I would hope that for the next one, they find a better way to tether it a little bit so that there's a little bit sure. more meat of like what am i actually supposed to be following yeah (laughs) yeah i mean we gotta know what is so special about mike and why he has been targeted this entire time yep that would be nice to know but uh we'll see what happens i don't know all right the fan base is there all right well that's gonna bring us to the end of the phantasm series it's time to say roll over phantasm roll over tremors (laughs) we're on to something brand new and if you know what I'm referencing there, we're coming up to the Beethoven series with the classic Chuck Berry song, Roll Over Beethoven, all over this movie. Uh, we're going to be singing that song for sure. Coming Dog. <laughs> <laughs> Dog. <laughs> Dog. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, hopefully, uh, you know, uh, they, they, they could incorporate the, spear, the spheres into the yeah. Beethoven movies. He can chase I'm them around. I'm excited to see where Charles Grodin, uh, how his story ties in with the tall man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> how many dimensional forks are going to be in the first film? Yes, yeah, so that's right. Uh, you know, I think that we, we try to vary genres here at Sequel Rights, and yes. one of our favorite genres that we get into, yes, there's family, yes, there's Christmas, yes, there's horror, there's action. But the dog genre is ripe for sequels, and uh, <laughs> this one has been on the list for a while. So I'm excited and just terrified to tackle it because there are eight films. Ooh. Yep. We'll see you for the next eight weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Uh, yeah, you know, it's been a while since Benji, and we were just, you know, feeling like uh, we, we need something cute and cuddly. Although I don't know how cuddly a giant St. Bernard is. <laughs> how dare you? <laughs> we will find out. <laughs> They're so big. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, we'll see you guys next week when we kick off uh, the Beethoven series. Bye. I've been left your wall. Come into my dimension. Because I know y'all been fishing. But my past and my present. Think I'm missing. Might need to call the partition. Ready or not, clock ticking. One minute I'm here. Next minute I'm gone. Some people call that a magician. Did you know? No. Reggie love the ladies where they go. It's like one minute they hear and then they turn to animals. If I slept with all these dummies, that will make me handle both. Why they looking in this room? I done been in here before Running from a tall man, mad scientist Try to add me to his client list But if I walk through those gates It'll be me and him, I'm not trying it Telling my best friend that I'm still me But he don't agree cause he ain't he But we both agree that I'm getting old Trying to kill these dwarfs but they kill me Woo! And I ain't never try to hurt nobody body. I'm in that cool tornado Hoping Mike can find me